again, I know it's far too soon to be looking at or even thinking about the 2017 Heisman Trophy candidates. Uh, but, you know, we're going to do it anyways. Everybody loves the way too early series, so I appreciate uh, the support on that. But of course, Lamar Jackson, Louisville quarterback Lamar Jackson, he won it last year. And, you know, this is, might be a little controversial, but had the Heisman been a midseason award, I think we would all agree. And I even made a video. I, I, I called it midseason. I said, give Lamar Jackson the Heisman trophy. There was no one else that deserved it. Midseason. Again, probably a little too soon. This isn't uh, obviously the entire year award. And towards the end of the year, we saw Lamar Jackson fall apart and, and kind of just not look so good. On the other side, we saw Clemson quarterback Deshaun Watson and Baker Mayfield and a few others really stand out and make a strong case. Overall, they continued. They said, you know what? We're still going to give it to Lamar Jackson. He deserves it. I, I was kind of on the fence at the end, and, and I really believe that the Heisman Trophy, just like the NFL does with the MVP, the Heisman Trophy should be at the end of the season, after the playoffs, and then announce it. Let's let's look at everything. And I, I think if had it been like that, I don't know if we would have gave the Heisman Trophy to Lamar Jackson. I think it might have gone to Deshaun Watson defeating Alabama and the streak that they had and what Deshaun Watson did all season. It might look better in the end. And even though the game against Louisville wasn't so pretty and Lamar Jackson, the way he played, I think it's a all season. What you did from game one to your last game, your bowl game, your playoff, your national championship game, you put it all in perspective and you give out the Heisman trophy at the end. doesn't look like it's going to change, but that's just my two cents. Now only doing five. I thought about doing 10, but then it got after about five, you really start start throwing in some wild cards, some guys that might make some noise, some guys maybe not. And you try to be diverse because, of course, it's, it gets kind of boring when you're just talking about quarterbacks. The quarterbacks, you know, being a quarterback award, you want to find some other players. And, yes, I, got, I think I have three quarterbacks in this list. <laughs> uh, the top two for sure are quarterbacks, and, and that's my fault. That's – I know. But – here we go. Number one. Well, it's got to go to Sam Darnold, right? USC quarterback. Now, once Darnold took over for USC, he turned a one and three start, an ugly one and three start, to a Rose Bowl win and a team that almost made a late run into the college football playoffs. Uh, now, he finished tied for ninth in adjusted complete, uh, completion percentage at 75.6%, and his 101.2 passer rating under pressure ranked seventh. Now, whether it was Darnold's big performance uh, in the in the win against Washington or his comeback in the Rose Bowl over Penn State, he showed his ability to carry an offense and lead a team. And once he took reign, it was a different USC team that a lot of us thought would have gave Alabama a better, a much bigger competition, of course, than what they had a week one it was like 55 to six or something, like, some outrageous score. Sam Darnold is the guy, and I think he's a favorite. I think he's a favorite. And if he's not the favorite, this next guy definitely definitely is. And it's not Lamar Jackson. I'll tell you right now, Lamar Jackson's not in my top five. I don't believe he's going to repeat. He's not going to repeat a Heisman Trophy. I think they were kind of already weary of giving him this past season. Even if he puts up the same numbers, which were ridiculous video game numbers, I don't believe he will get it again. The next guy is had a good argument, especially if we're going to look at quarterbacks, and that's Oklahoma Sooners quarterback Baker Mayfield, the highest-rated uh, quarterback in 2016 at 96.1 overall per uh, pro football focus and do these uh, amazing stats. Mayfield and Oklahoma overcame a slow start and still finished with a Big 12 championship. And Mayfield joined, he had a teammate, D.D. Westbrook, as a Heisman finalist. Now, Mayfield has got a very strong shot at going back to New York and being there for the ceremony, except this time he won't just be a spectator. He'll most likely be raising up the Heisman Trophy. Uh, now, you know, 
he was the top passing quarterback in the nation by a wide margin, sitting near the top of all major passing categories and his work under pressure and on the deep ball. His overall adjusted completion percentage of 80.1 led all Power 5 quarterbacks. He was accurate, dual threat, and he made plays when they needed. Obviously, the real mark on his uh, resume last season was that terrible home loss to Ohio State. Had it been on the road, maybe it's a little bit different. At home, hosting Ohio State, and you couldn't do anything. That's a problem. Now, one thing we've been seeing with Oklahoma is, uh, well, he's got he's not going to have Westbrook. He's losing targets. Joe Mixon's gone. So, so my JP Ryan's gone. How is he going to be able to play, especially at D.D. Westbrook, who was just an absolute star? Well, you look at Oklahoma's past receivers, and, I mean, you go from Kenny Stills, Sterling Shepard, uh, Westbrook, you had, and I'm missing two other names that I just had previously. These guys were replacing receiver after receiver after receiver, and they kept, they just kept winning. They kept Quarterbacks kept doing their thing. So I expect him to still put up another 36, 3,700-yard passing season, another 30-plus touchdowns. This guy is doing incredible stuff. And that's why I know I that's my last quarterback I got on here. It's my last quarterback. But those two guys are have to be the favorite at the quarterback position. Then we go to running back. And this one was tough. This one was tough. If you want to put 3A, 3B, three, uh, three that's fine. At number three, I got Saquon Barkley running back at a Penn State guy who helped carry that offense. He did his freshman year, definitely. And this past season, Penn State's finally got a quarterback. But he really led this offense. And not a lot of people talk about Saquon Barkley and how incredible uh, athletic talent this guy has. Uh, again, he Penn State's going to be uh, in contention to win the, uh, the Big Ten this year, of, of course. And just a lot of hype. James Franklin proved me wrong. Had it made me had to bite my words. And he's got a team going. Saquon Barkley, electric guy. I don't really like to throw out stats too much, but this guy has it down. And he's one of my favorite running backs coming into the season. But another running back, this is where it got tough. Because you look at Darius Geis running back at an LSU. It was tough because, of course, we all thought maybe Leonard Fournette wins the Heisman this upcoming year. We all knew it was going to be his last year in college. Well, at LSU, apparently, you can have a Heisman candidate and then you can have another replace that guy with another Heisman candidate. And Darius Geis was one of them. And the running backs don't really get a lot of love. But Darius Geis and Saquon Barkley have to be the top running backs coming back in 2017. Uh Finished with 1,300 yards, almost 1,400 yards rushing, 15 touchdowns. Again, this was backing up Leonard Fournette, who did battle through, through injuries, did miss a few games. So get, guys still had you know a good amount of playing time, but he was still labeled as the backup running back. Leonard Fournette was the starter, was the guy leading this offense until he got hurt, until we started missing those games. And Darius guys was a big play running back. And this is why maybe he's just a little bit better than Barkley. But again, I feel like Barkley had a worse O-line. And, and, and thinking about the offense that Penn State runs more balanced than what Geis does. Geis is always going to have a little bit more uh, stats-wise, running backs-wise. But 58.6% of his yards came from breakaway runs, 15-plus or more. That was third highest in the country. He's got talent. He's got it there. It wasn't just the O-line. And now, of course, LSU opening up the playbook is going to allow Darius Geis to do more things, catching out of backfield and, and just handling all the running back responsibilities. It's going to be exciting, so Geis has to be there. Now, I had to throw a wild card in here. And I know what people are saying. What about Bo Scarborough? What about Jalen Hurts of Alabama? And what, we got JT Barrett. Nice, and I just don't see it happening. So, at number five, and you've probably guessed it by looking at your screen up here, and those for listening at the show, you got to come check it us on YouTube. Come subscribe. But James Washington, wide receiver of Oklahoma State, 
This guy is electric. I've watched him his whole career in the Big 12, and now I was able to see him live at the Alamo Bowl and what he does. And when you watch him, his full game speed live in person, it's a different story. The best slot receiver in college football, without a doubt, Washington is that guy. And he's actually going to get a little bit of help from his former Bedlam rival wide receiver in D.D. Westbrook. Westbrook got a lot of love as a slot receiver. James Washington steps right in there in the national picture and is allowed to be looked at as a Heisman candidate and potentially a Heisman finalist. Now, after back-to-back 1,000-plus yard seasons, including a 1,300-yard season, 10 touchdowns, he was 20 yards short of 1,400 yards. Washington is going to have the luxury of having his top quarterback, who Mason Rudolph, another potential Heisman uh, candidate. He's going to have him back along with a few other starters on Oklahoma State squad that should contend not only for a Big 12 championship, but also a dark horse in the college football playoffs. With that being said, that is why James Washington is thrown into this mix and should be looked at. Again, I know there's going to be more fans for Alabama, for Ohio State. They're going to say, what about this guy? What about this? These are my five. And again, before anybody gets you know too hurt about this and, and wants to go in the comment section typing up, Remember, it's January. It's just January. We got eight more months to be talking about way too early picks. But these are my top five. Let me know your top five in the comment section down below. Also, tweet me at Short Sports Show and become a fan on Facebook. And subscribe here on YouTube for more videos and to listen to the full show. Come on over to Spreaker, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, iTunes, iHeartRadio. We're just about everywhere.